whatsoever. Um, but today I'm doing a makeup for beginners video. So this is kind of for anyone starting out in high school or, you know, whenever you start wearing makeup, just kind of like a light natural look that just kind of helps accentuate your features and hide imperfections. So it's not like a full face of makeup or, you know, anything really crazy. Now the foundation that I've been using is the um, Origin Stay Tuned Balancing Face Makeup. It looks like this. It comes in a little glass bottle. It's about $23 at um, like Macy's or any department store or anything like that. Um, and I really like this. It is a bit pricey for a high school budget though, so um, if you want to try something for the, from the drugstore that is um, just really also really good for um, skin problems, I'd recommend the CoverGirl. I think it's called Stay Fabulous like 3-in-1 makeup. It's a clear bottle with a blue pump and you can find it pretty much or any drugstore like Target, Walmart, all those kinds of things. So I'm just going to do like a quick makeup application for an everyday kind of high school look and I um, really hope this video helps you guys out. If you have any questions about why I did something or if I missed a step that you guys want to see included, just comment below and I'll like respond or try to make another video kind of similar to this. Um, but I'm just kind of doing the basics. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please keep on watching and let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm starting off by applying a primer. Um, this one's a $12, it's by The Body Shop, it's called Tea Tree Pore Minimizer. I would recommend using a primer whether you have dry skin or oily skin or pretty much any kind of skin type because if you're using a foundation or even just concealer, you want to have a barrier between your skin and your makeup so your makeup doesn't make you break out and it doesn't seep into your pores and all that kind of stuff. It also helps the makeup apply a lot better. Um, so you can get a primer, they have a bunch of them at the drugstore, mine was, like I said, $12 at The Body Shop. They make really expensive ones, you know, um, ones for different skin types and everything like that, I would just recommend a primer. Also, make sure you apply moisturizer, whether it's a light moisturizer and you have oily skin or you need a heavier one because you have um, dry skin, but always apply a moisturizer. Um, but I'm just starting in the T-zone because this um, specific primer helps with oily skin, which I have in my T-zone. So what I do is I just apply a little bit in the center and just kind of blend outward. Um, this one is really good for acne, so if you have skin problems like acne or um, any kind of blemishes or oily skin, I would really recommend this one. It's a really great price, smells nice, like minty, and um, it's really great. Next step is foundation. Um, you don't have this, like I said, you don't have to use foundation. You can use a tinted moisturizer or BB cream if you have better skin, or even just skip this step altogether if you have really good skin. And maybe, um, but I'm going to mix two colors together because they don't make my color in this foundation. Um, but I'm just going to do that real quick with a Real Techniques buffing brush, and I'll be right back. We should take a walk someday, dream about what we could have been. Okay guys, so I just zoomed in, I just applied my foundation um, really quickly to the buffing brush. That's probably the quickest way to do it with any kind of a big brush, like a kabuki or buffing brush. Um, especially if you're using like a light kind of coverage, light medium coverage. Um, next up is going to be concealer. Now you can use a different concealer for under eyes, on blemishes, or if you just have blemishes, if you don't have bags under eyes, you know. It kind of depends on your skin, obviously. But you always want to apply concealer after foundation. Now if you're just applying powder, you want to do concealer first. But if you are applying foundation or tinted moisturizer or BB cream, you always want to apply concealer second. That might sound a little strange. You think you want to cover up your spots because they're more important first. But what you're doing with the foundation is that you're covering up everything and making it even and everything. And then whatever is still showing through, that is what you're going to put concealer on. By putting concealer on before your foundation or your base, you're just kind of creating an extra layer of makeup that you really don't need. Also, you're kind of blending it off of that. If you notice, if you apply, if I had applied my concealer on my spots and then applied my foundation, then I would have extra makeup on those spots. The foundation right now did some work and covered up a few spots. It really helped with under my, under my eyes and stuff like that. And I would have already applied so much makeup of concealer. So you really want to make sure that you're applying your concealer after your foundation. It is really, really important to do that. A lot of people don't know that, but you should really apply your concealer second. It might seem weird because your concealer isn't always the same color as your foundation, but if you blend it in properly, it should look perfectly fine. By the way, sorry about the lighting. The sun's going in and out like every five seconds. I'm just going to use the Benefits Erase Paste. I really love this one for under my eyes and on blemishes. You can get a separate one for both things, everything like that, but for under the eyes, I just kind of plop it down there because I don't have too bad under eye problems and just kind of blend it in with my Real Techniques Dome Shadow Brush. So, I mean, if you have really bad under eye circles, there's a bunch of really great ones that are really meant for this. Um, this one is meant for actually both. But um, you want to use a more moisturizing one under the eyes, usually, because if you use anything too dry, it'll like, get into lines. And even though you're in high school, you're still going to have a little bit of lines underneath your eyes. So try to get something a little bit lighter for under the eyes to really brighten it up and awaken you. Um, now for blemishes, you can use your finger and just like dab it on, but you never want to rub on a blemish to get it concealed. What you want to do is just apply, I'm going to say this one, you just want to push it on. And I'm going to go over this whole pretty much side of my face with concealer because this foundation that I use is pretty light coverage. 
So what you want to do is once you've applied the concealer on, you just want to push it in. You want to blend it in as you would with your eye makeup or anything like that. You just want to push it. And it might seem, oh my god, that's not blended at all. And it might take a little bit longer this way, but that's the best way to do it because you're getting the most of the makeup on the blemish and really concealing it than you are in the brush or on your finger if you're using your finger. What you can do after if it doesn't seem perfectly blended, if it's not the same color as your foundation, use the foundation brush that you use and just kind of go over whatever, with whatever's left on the brush and blend it back in. And I'm just going to apply concealer on all of my spots and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so the next step after you've applied your concealer and blended all that in and you're done with kind of your base, you're going to start with your eyes. And you, or you, I mean you could also do your cheeks first, it doesn't matter what order, this is just the order that I do it in. Um, next step that I do is my eyebrows. Now you don't have to do your eyebrows, you know in high school it's kind of like if it's too much for you to be doing in the morning before school. But um, I just started doing them this summer and I think it's a really great difference. So you can skip this step obviously. Um, if you have unruly brows and you don't feel like filling them in, then you could just take a spoolie and just kind of, you know, brush them through so they're all aiming the same direction. Um, but I'm just going to fill mine in real quick and then I'll be right back. I don't want to leave this place. There's no faith in Brooklyn. Yeah. If I move out one day, it will make you're going to go in for your eyes. Now you don't have to do eyeshadow at all if you really are in a rush. You could just apply some mascara and be good to go. But I really loved using eyeshadow in high school. I liked experimenting and stuff. But um, for an everyday look, you don't have to use color or anything. But I would recommend a primer because when you're younger you can have pretty oily skin and your eyelids are not exempt of that. You know, you can really get oily eyelids. Um, there's a bunch of different primers that you can use. They melt make a bunch at the drugstore. Um, I have some high-end ones and, and some drugstore ones. I have the MAC paint pots, which are really good. Um, the e.l.f. Eyelid Primer, which is about a dollar, and the Urban Decay one. The Urban Decay one's my favorite. It definitely works the best for me, but today I'm just going to use the MAC. You just want to apply your primer all over your lid and wherever you're going to be applying shadow. Um, obviously, you can do a more intense look than I'm going to do in this video with your eyes, um, but for beginners, and if you're just starting off, you don't want to go straight from wearing absolutely no makeup to wearing heavy full coverage makeup and like heavy eyes and all that stuff. So I'm just going to do a really, really natural look. Some things I'd recommend, I really love the Naked 1 and Naked 2 palettes. They're really great for every day. They have a lot of neutral looks, really glittery looks, you know. You can pretty much do anything you want with these two palettes, but because I know a lot of you guys that are watching this video are on a high school budget, really afford the um, $50 palettes from Urban Decay. So I'm going to use a Wet n Wild palette, the Comfort Zone palette. I think this was 5 or $6 at Walgreens. Um, there's a lot of really great colors, the more colorful ones, and then a more neutral side. So I'm just going to use two neutral colors for this look. Um, obviously you can do whatever you want. If you want to do a more like gray look, a more blue look, whatever, I'm going to use kind of neutrally browns. I'm going to do this look with two brushes. Um, you can kind of keep it with one brush. If you're really neutral, you can use one color all over the lid. If you're going to use one color all over the lid in this look, I would recommend it to be this kind of pinkish champagne color because it's really nice and gl gl glittery and kind of just awakens the eye without, you know, doing too much. But so I'm just going to take a flat kind of concealer looking brush, I'm not really sure what this is called, but it's at Eco Tools, um, and just kind of pat my brush in and tap it off because um, these the eyeshadows can have a little bit of fallout. And I'm just going to kind of pat that all over my lid, just kind of wake in my eye, put it in the inner corner, and just kind of bring it all over the entire lid. I'm also going to go a little bit underneath the brow bone. You can totally skip this step, like I said, if you don't want to wear any, anything on your lids, it's totally fine. But I think that a little bit of glittery eyeshadow can really make a difference from looking kind of sleepy to looking more awake. Now you can leave it just like this, you know, just the glittery color, but I am going to go in with a little bit of the darker color underneath it, it's kind of like a nice brown color. I'm going to use a blending brush for that, I'm just going to dip it in that and tap that off. I just kind of apply that in my crease really lightly, so this isn't even like a real contour or, you know, a real intense look. It's just a little bit darker in the crease. Just for a nice natural look. If you prefer, you can always take a little bit of that underneath the eye. You could also take this really dark defining color or a black or light brown eyeliner or something and put that on the lash line, on the upper lash line to really define your lashes. I'm going to skip that step just because I think that's not so everyday. That's a little bit more dramatic and this is kind of for, this video is kind of for someone who's really starting off and you don't want to make a huge dramatic difference. Mascara is definitely my most important step other than concealer because it really awakens me, makes my eyes look wide and open and everything. You can use a big 
um, dress, different some mascaras. They have high end ones, low end ones, really cheap ones like three dollars. Ones that are ten dollars. Um, I have a ten dollar bottom lash one, which I'm going to use, even though I know you guys probably can't afford it. But I'm going out, and I really love this one. Um, I'm using a L'Oreal one that's about seven dollars, which is really good for volumizing your lashes. It's waterproof, it won't smudge, and everything like that. And then um, the Maybelline Volume Express one by one is really great, just for a little bit of color and really to separate them with no clumps. Um, there's a bunch of new ones out there, you know, there's a million different mascaras to choose from, but I think this is a really important step. Once you choose your mascara, you're just going to curl your eyelashes, which I think is really important unless you have, like, naturally curled eyelashes, but, you know, we're not all lucky enough to have that. So you're just going to curl your eyelashes and then apply your mascara. So once you apply your mascara, what you're going to do is you're going to take your mascara and start at the root of the lash and kind of wiggle back and forth and pull up. Because just by pulling straight up, you're just kind of coating it, but to really separate them, you want to start at the root and pull. Start at the root and pull up. And you can put as many coats as you want. Try not to get them to clump. They make a bunch of really great clump-free mascaras nowadays. So, you know, you could always try those out. But I'm just going to finish um, the other eye and the bottom lashes, and I'll be right back. Okay, so for the final two steps, what we're going to do is apply a blush. You can apply a bronzer if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it because it, that kind of can give you kind of an older look by contouring or really bronzing up your face. You can kind of look older like you're wearing too much makeup. So I'd recommend just a nice natural coloring, color um blush. I'm using one from Origins. It's a really neutral kind of almost skin tone color which I really like because I think it looks really natural and just gives a little bit of a flush. You can use kind of a more peach or pink or whatever color you prefer but um, nothing too drastic or you're going to look like you're wearing way too much makeup for school. Um, but you can just use any kind of a blush brush. Just tap it in and just apply it to the apples of your cheeks. You know this doesn't have to be super perfect or anything. You're blending it in pretty easily. Um, but you just want to go from when you smile wherever it, it kind of sticks out. That's your apples and then just apply backwards. Not that backwards, but like up towards your um, hairline. Once you've applied your blush, then you're pretty much done. But if you have oily skin, like a lot of high school students do, or even if you don't and you just want to make sure your makeup lasts all day during school, because I think school is like eight hours or something, um, then you're gonna want to apply your um, powder, any kind of a setting powder um, or a mattifying powder, anything like that. I'm using the um, Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. It's really great. It's really cheap, and you can just get it at any drugstore. I'm just gonna use a nice fluffy brush for that and just kind of mostly apply that in my t-zone where I get the most oily just to help control oils and everything like that. You can always throw some oil absorbing pads in your bag or um, bring something like this any kind of powder with you to school and touch up throughout the day. And I know I said that was the final step but I was mistaken. Um, next step would be lips. The last step is usually that's what everyone does last because it doesn't last longest. Um, but for high school I'd recommend any kind of just like a tinted lip balm or a plain lip balm. I didn't use any color. I think lipsticks can kind of look like a little bit aging on people. So what I use every day for school and I go to college is the Clarence Instant Light lip, Natural Lip Perfector. It's pretty expensive for this lip gloss but any kind of lip gloss will do. I know NYX makes some really great ones at the drugstore. You don't want to do a lip gloss because they can be a little bit like sticky and get over get on your drinks and stuff like that you can just go for a lip balm the baby lips are really cheap about 250 or three dollars at any drugstore they have ones that are really clear like this that are just give a little bit of a shine to your lips they all smell really good they taste really good none of them make my lips break out and everything almost does it's good if you have sensitive lips like i do they also make colors like this that are in almost like a sheer kind of pink color and i'm just gonna apply that one So you can just kind of get sheer color from something like this. They do make another peach color um, and some more red colors and stuff like that. So any kind of a sheer color should be good for school um, or a lip gloss, you know, anything like that is pretty much good for a nice and natural makeup look. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for the makeup look. Um, I have just a nice light co um, coverage of foundation and some concealer um, and a really light kind of like shimmery eye that looks really natural and some mascara and some lip gloss and a little tiny bit of blush. You know, nothing crazy. I think this is a really good fast look. It took kind of longer for me to do it obviously because I'm talking through it, but um, it's a really nice natural look for every day for school and I really hope it helped you guys out. Um, please leave any questions you might have in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, also, please make sure to check out my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, which are all linked below as always. And um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm saying, so like, we're just kidding. <laughs> if I move out one day, it will make.